Hey guys, King Rezzle here, and today we're going to be talking about what is probably the biggest Wii U game for holiday 2016, Paper Mario Color Splash. This game was released on October the 7th and is a Wii U exclusive, and as with my other reviews, I'm going to be reviewing this one based on its story, gameplay, and value before giving it an overall verdict. With all that said, let's go ahead and kick this off with the story. The story of the game begins with Princess Peach and Toad arriving at Mario's house late one rainy night and delivering to him a piece of mail which turns out to be a folded up toad drained of all its color. Mario, noticing the stamp on the toad, figures out that the toad is actually from Prism Island and the trio head over to the island to see what happened. When they arrive, however, they find the place to be deserted and the paint wells in the middle of the town to be dry. Toad splits off and Peach and Mario find a paint can named Huey who asks Mario to help him retrieve the big paint stars which have been stolen by Bowser who has been empowered by black paint. From here the story follows Mario and Huey as they go in search of these big paint stars. The majority of the story is just various interactions with Toads on Prism Island who need your help with something. Uh, this one may need to help finding his dog. While this one may want you to create the perfect pizza. It's also important to note that the story is mainly comedic. It's crammed with end jokes that are about various Mario games, and I found pretty much everything to be lighthearted until the very end. For my personal thoughts on the story, I thought it was very good. As I stated, the story is mainly comedic, and I personally think that this really sets it apart from a lot of games that at least I personally play. Uh, I'll show you two examples of jokes at near the beginning of the game so you can kind of gauge the humor for yourself. This kind of atmosphere makes the game a lot more relaxed, but if comedy is not really something that you're looking for in this game, then I can't really suggest this to you. Personally though, I found the story to be both charming and funny. As with the other Paper Mario games, Color Splash is an action-adventure game with a turn-based combat system. This time around, however, the world is based on paint, and that has an impact on how you interact with the world while exploring and what you do during combat. First, let's talk about exploration. Levels are accessed through the game's overworld. You'll go into a level, and here you can explore a paper world in 3D. The world is typically filled with enemies to combat, colorless holes to fill in with your paint hammer, and a mini paint star which is usually found near the end of the level. Most levels will also have some form of story which basically amounts to a puzzle that must be solved in order for you to get to the paint star, and this paint star, after collected, will take you to the next level. A good example of this would be at Blue Beach Bay, where you can go and play hide and seek with a group of toads in order to get the key to get to the paint star. These levels also intersect in a wide variety of ways. Again, going back to the example of Blue Beach Bay, the first time you visit, you're going to meet a blue toad in a boat, which is going to tell his friends that he wants to sail to the ends of the earth. Later on, after you've progressed in the story a little bit and you return to Blue Beach Bay, this toad will have set off on his voyage and crashed, and you're going to need a quote-unquote thing to bring him back to the shore. Another probably better example would be the Rescue Squads. These are groups of Toads who band together to help Mario in some way. Each team has a varying amount of members, and you'll need to rescue all of the members in order for them to perform their task. Typically, these members are scattered between levels, so you'll need to visit other levels in order for them to perform their task. And yes, you could classify this as backtracking if you wanted. However, I personally never really had a very big issue with that because the placement of these things and the levels, but it is technically still backtracking. 
So I mentioned things when I was talking about the toads at Blue Beach Bay, so let me go ahead and explain what those are. Things are objects in the world that are 3D that can be squeezed down into cards and can be used in certain situations. Uh, they have various purposes, but the purposes for the exploration aspect of the game revolve around using the cutout ability and placing them in the correct locations. And since I mentioned it, the cutout ability is just a way of solving puzzles in the world pretty much. At times the game is going to give you hints that a cutout should be used here, and then at other times you're just going to have to look around a little bit. But basically you'll just press the button and then you'll follow the dotted line with the scissors on the gamepad. Now let's talk about combat. In general, an encounter with an enemy will have them either running into you or you running into them, and then the battle will commence. The actual battle is sort of a split between the handheld screen on the Wii U's gamepad and the TV screen. And I do apologize, but I don't have any way of recording the gamepad, so I can't show you that. But the TV shows off the movements that you've selected, and the gamepad shows up what your setup is for the next turn. On the gamepad, you'll see all of the cards that you have on you, your paint, as well as a few other things such as flea and battle roll. Once you've selected a card, you can put it into the boxes at the top of the gamepad. You'll start with one, but you can have up to a total of four. Next, you'll paint the card if necessary and send it into battle. Now, what's most interesting is the painting of the cards. Your hand will consist of both painted and non-painted cards. Painted cards could just be played and they don't require any paint, and non-painted cards can be played, but the amount of paint that you apply to them will affect how much damage that card will do. There are multiple different types of attack cards that you can have in battle. Jump cards, hammer cards, ice and flower cards, enemy cards, and thing cards are the main ones. Jump, hammer, and flower cards are the most common attacks, and each of these cards can be powered up based on correctly pressing the A button at the right time, such as when you're about to land on an enemy's head with the jump card. Enemy cards call forth an enemy to help you in the fight. However, these cards can only take one hit, so I don't really see them as being particularly useful. And finally, thing cards are again obtained by squeezing 3D objects in the world, and each of these cards have a specific animation to perform when they're called out, and they all deal very good amounts of damage. However, in boss battles, thing cards take on different uses. Almost every boss battle requires some kind of thing card in order for you to be able to win it. We'll take the example of Morton since he's the first boss fight, and I'm trying to avoid spoilers here. Uh, about halfway through the boss fight, Morton is going to set his hammer on fire. Now, if you do nothing about this, then that hammer is going to deal massive damage to you, and you're not going to be able to win. However, if you use the Fire Extinguisher Thing card, then this fire will be put out, and you'll be able to defeat Morton. Luckily, though, you don't need to just go in blindly and guess what kind of Thing card that you're going to need, because in any given situation, you can ask the Toad in Port Prisma, and he's going to hint at the card you're going to need, and you can go from there. For my opinions on the gameplay, I think it was very good, but it did have some downsides. The biggest downside for me was there was no true progression for Mario in this game. So, in this game, I would argue that Mario never truly gets any stronger, and if the cards needed were given to you in the beginning, we could have fought the final boss and won without going on the whole journey, which for me is an issue. Now, that may not be entirely accurate because you do get health upgrades and you get extra card slots given as rewards throughout the game, but for the most part in the game, your attacks never get any stronger, and you never truly learn any new moves. You just get these new cards. And I just think that's an inferior system to what they had in the Thousand Year Door. However, by no means do I think there's anything wrong with the system that they actually have in the game. Combat is still fun and fluid, and the aspect of painting your cards during the battle is an interesting one. But for me personally, if I'm going to put all this time into an RPG game, and this is a very long game, I want my character to progress in some sort of more meaningful way than just getting extra health and card slots. Overall, this game took me around 25 hours to beat. That's with me playing at my own pace, trying to do as much as possible in the worlds, but skipping a majority of the Rochambeau temples. And there's also a museum to fill with cards, and full completion of covering every non-painted area in levels, which could have added a few more hours to the game if you're into that thing and you're trying to go for full completion. However, I personally don't see much replay value in it after you've already beaten it. And by the way, Rochambeau temples are basically rock, paper, scissor mini games. Uh, they're a good way to get money, but I personally just didn't really enjoy them very much. Overall, I enjoyed Paper Mario Color Splash more than I thought I would. I haven't actually played a Paper Mario game since the Thousand Year Door for various reasons. Uh, I had, however, heard that Sticker Star was poorly received by the fans, and they were giving the same criticism to this game before it was even out. So, I had my doubts on how good this would be, but I am glad that I gave it a shot, because I do think it's a very good game, and... Being more comedic, it's definitely a nice contrast to the games that I typically play, which was fun. So to sum this all up, some things that I didn't like about the game were that the progression wasn't overly satisfying for me, and I didn't mention this above, but the designs of the Toads could have definitely been more varied. 
I think this picture pretty much says it all. Uh, I found this on Google. And even though not every toad looks like that, a vast majority of them do, just with various colors. And as for what I liked about the game, I enjoyed the comedic aspects of the story, thing card animations were enjoyable to watch, and I think that they did a pretty good job of making the world feel more connected between the missions. Overall, I think I'm going to give this game a 9 out of 10. This was a very fun game for me. Relaxing and charming, I think, are the best words to describe it. Alright guys, so that is pretty much everything that I have to say about this game. I hope I helped you get a better feel for it. The next review that I plan on doing will be for Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, which I am very excited for, even if the beta won't let me connect for whatever reason. Uh, other than that, the next coming soon episode that I'll be doing will be for Pokemon Sun and Moon. That should be coming in the next couple of days. And also, stay tuned for a game trivia on this game, so... You know, if you want to see any of those, then make sure you subscribe and stick around. Either way, though, guys, thank you for watching this, and uh, I hope to see you all in the next video.